Well, we're here in the Lyric Theatre in Belfast. It's between the gridded streets of the kind of brick streets of Belfast and the um, serpentine line of the Lagan River it sort of wanders through. You have to imagine that Belfast is a gridiron city and then the Lagan just behaves as if it's different. And we're exactly between those two places. Well, the elements make that make up the theatre are the big auditorium, which is 400 seat, and a flexible 150 seat studio auditorium. We have a rehearsal room, which is the same size as the stage in the big auditorium. And then obviously there's lots of dressing rooms and areas for backstage. There's a quite a substantial wardrobe and um, laundry area. Uh, and then there's quite a bit of office because again, being a producing house, there's a kind of admin aspect to that. There's a bar and a little cafe, and I think that those are the main elements of the brief. The materials of the building, our base thought before we even had a design, was that it was going to be built out of brick. We call it Belfast brick because um, just coming from outside, you look at Belfast and you realise the whole of Belfast is built out of brick, and it's a particular kind of angular brick. Uh, Belfast is not a smooth place, it's a Mm, let's call it a pointy kind of a place. So we knew we wanted something that was a bit sharp and a bit brick. And then um, for the, the budget here is very tight, but we wanted to express the raw materials of the construction. Um, I have to say we wanted to kind of play with those materials. So we have really beautiful concrete in this building. And then we have fantastic um, hardwood joinery, windows and floors. This theatre is built on, as, as you will have seen, quite a sloping site. So that meant that we have the auditorium at one level, but because of the way the slope works and the way the traffic works, the audience come in at a low level. So from the outset, there was a kind of challenge and opportunity to make um, a dynamic route, but which is, a, which is an upward moving route of the public into and around the auditorium. But we felt we had to make a staircase or a set of staircases which would feel easy or exciting. So you didn't think, oh, I'm coming the door and I've got to walk all the way up to the auditorium. So we had this idea that the stairs are like a kind of flowing movement, almost like a river of stone between the brick, which is the internal um, walls of the auditorium, the two auditoria and the rehearsal room. But we tried to make the stairs into a kind of little events and pockets and turn the stairs and make a landing where people could stop and have a intimate conversation or where a bus tour of kids could all sit on the stair like a little auditorium of itself or a kind of a place where there will be a seat for people who don't want to go downstairs for a gin and tonic but want to send their son-in-law downstairs at the interval. There's lots of little eddies and pockets carved out of this flow. Um, it comes out of it being a topographical uh, hilly site. It's a hill town. I think what we wanted in terms of its internal layout was we wanted this feeling that the city or that the site flowed through the building. So even when you're inside this building, you still feel a little bit like you're back out in the street. Um, so I think when you enter the building, it doesn't look any different on the inside than it looks on the outside. But then as you crack through to the next layer, each of those components, each of those brick houses is completely different on the inside than each other. So the auditorium doesn't feel like the rehearsal room. The rehearsal room doesn't feel like the studio. That meant that I think f for our, us as architects, it's more complex. Um, the project has different identities, three different identities. But, but they're all pulled together in one kind of little town plan. It's like we're making a little town for the theatre. So when you're designing a theatre, you have two almost contradictory challenges. One is the light. The artificial lights, the theatre lights, have to shine straight down and light up the audience, light up the actors without the audience being aware of them as sources of light. So they have to have a clean line down. But the sound of the actors' voices has to come back and bounce off surfaces, which will reflect it down to the audience. And so there's a risk that if you have clear lines of light, that the actors' voices just disappear into the, the voids where the lights are. So the way that we have the complexity of that timber lining is designed around working some angles to get the light to work and other angles to reflect the voices back down and that they would somehow synthesize together to make that shape of those arches. 
there's a bend in the seats, which is very, which looks very slight on the plan, but it's enough to make it that if you're sitting in a row, you can see the people at the other end because they're slightly at an angle to you. And that was a very important sense of trying to get um, to wrap the audience around the action. So we the, w- the the wrapping of the seats also led to a kind of diagonal aisle, which means that there's no point where there's a big gap in the middle where the actor is looking into a void. You can't have theatre without lighting, but theatre people think completely about light on the stage, you know, and control of lighting conditions. They're actually not interested in daylight, but it took us an effort to persuade them to love daylight. This rehearsal room now, the brief for this rehearsal room was a room with no windows. They wanted, because they want retreat, withdrawal, you know, they want to get away from everyone and just rehearse. Um, actors are introverts when they're not showing off. Um, but so we introduced it one at a time. We said first we could have roof light, no one can see you from the sky. Then you could look into the treetops, you know, that's quite private. And then at the last minute we introduced a kind of a peephole window there so they can see the audience, which now they quite like. But each each window was like, you know, a, a negotiated kind of um, agreement. And in the studio, they wanted a black box theater. We didn't really want that because we think that doesn't give anything much back in terms of character. So we said it should be a brick theater on the inside as if it's a warehouse space. And then we said it should also open to the street because th- the city is theater and why can't you have the city in the theater? And that also took a little talking about. We put a kind of a folding, a rolling shutter on that window like a, so they can have the city when they want it and they can blank it when they don't. But each time we try to introduce as much light as we could, but by degrees. What I most like about this project and how it's worked out is really how the clients are using the building and the way that it's been kind of accepted and adapted into Belfast life and that actually people who were total devotees of the old building and who felt really worried about anything changing are quite happy and feel in some ways they feel it's almost the same as it was before although it's absolutely and completely different it's not a it's not a typical diagram of a theater it's a sort of typical theater um, twisted to fit into this condition and i think that makes it more lively um, and more involving for people participating in a daily activities of rehearsing or acting or learning their lines or going for a coffee. Our motto for this project was to build a house for Lyric. That was how we entered the competition with a house for Lyric. And I think what gives me most pleasure is that it feels like this is now a kind of lived in house.